Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about a new risk indicator we just launched for Terra and its native token Luna. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on Twitter where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. So if you're returning to the channel, you're quite familiar with this type of graph. What I'm showing you here is the price history of Luna across time with the price in logarithmic form. Each dot is a day and each day is color coded based on the output of our risk indicator, the upside downside potential indicator or UDPI. And the way you can read the output is a score of five is high risk. That's when the upside potential is quite low, downside potential is quite high. And a score of negative five is when the downside potential is quite low, upside potential is quite high. What you can see is that across time, the UDPI does a pretty great job of identifying these low risk zones in Luna's history, as well as these high risk zones, these kind of tops that either lead into corrections or kind of sideways movement. And so you can imagine that if one had been trading based on the output of the UDPI and buying in during these low risk times in Luna's history, and then selling during these low risk, excuse me, these high risk times in Luna's history, one would have done quite well. You know, this was about a 76x move from here to here. This is about a 10x move from here to here. You know, if one had bought here, sold here, bought here, sold here, that's a 760x move that one would have made in about the past year just trading Luna based on the UDPI output. So as you can imagine, one can really kind of optimize those entrances and exits based on this kind of information and then really compound those profits potentially um, after doing so. So another thing that we can look at is instead of just looking at the, the price history and color coding that to the model, we just look at the actual output of the model. And so what I've done here is I've changed the y-axis just to be the UDPI output. So five high risk, negative five low risk. And you see that it kind of, the UDPI will kind of hang out in these low risk zones, you know, negative three, negative four, negative five, during those times when Luna has historically been at these kind of opportune moments to be buying. And then it spikes up to these really high risk levels here when exiting the market has been advantageous. And so I identified the summer again as being advantageous, moving into that big move up into September, high risk, and now it's actually been falling. And one thing I think is kind of interesting about this recent behavior is that, you know, looking back at the price um, action of Luna, you know, the price has slowly been kind of appreciating. You know, there's been some volatility, but it's kind of slowly been moving to the upside, putting in slightly higher all-time highs, pulling back higher all-time highs, et cetera, kind of this upwards movement. But you'll notice that the UDPI has actually been falling during this time. And I see that as a pretty bullish uh, signal. It's, it means that even though the price of Luna is increasing, it means that the UDPI thinks that there's kind of more and more upside potential that's possible. And so therefore it's it's allowing for more upside potential, it's saying that more upside potential is possible. There still thinks that there's a bit more downside potential currently, but it's sitting right now at a kind of a roughly even point, you know, slightly more downside potential than upside. But the idea is that if Luna were to kind of go nuts uh, in the near future, kind of go on another big run, the idea is that the model thinks that there's a decent amount of upside potential for it to realize before it kind of tap out again, kind of get to these high risk zones and maybe need to cool off again, either correct or kind of reconsolidate at a, at a higher point. So something that we also talk a lot about on this channel, and I think that Luna gives an interesting like historical example of, of how this could be effective, is the idea that you can use these indicators in conjunction with indicators for other assets to be able to figure out how after riding, for example, a 10x move in Luna, is there another asset that's lower risk at that time that you could have taken those profits, put it into the lower risk asset, and then ride the, that lower risk asset on its move that it would put in later. And so coming out of the summer for Luna, it was one of the first assets to move. You know, it was one of the early ones. It really put in massive moves in uh, kind of early to mid-August um, and kind of outpaced a lot of the rest of the market. Well, a lot of other altcoins hadn't put in big moves yet, and they were a lot slower to do so. And so really by the time that Luna got up to this high risk zone, there's still other assets sitting at lower risk points that hadn't put in crazy moves yet. So I think uh, a good way of kind of illustrating this idea is here I just put the, the UDPI for Luna on the top here, and I'm gonna compare it to the UDPI of a different altcoin, uh, HBAR, which if we look at this point at which Luna had kind of crossed over this four level, this high risk zone, where generally once assets get up to this point, they're getting quite close to tapping out their potential. They're unlikely to put in any more, much more room to the upside, much more cra crazy moves to the upside. You'll see that exact same point in time, HBAR was sitting at about zero, so significantly lower risk, about four levels of risk lower, quite a bit lower. And you know, HBAR had been appreciating in price um, coming out of the summer, but nothing like um, what Luna had been able, been able to do. 
And so really, if one had been, when one was in the market, you know, uh, following these things, you know, HBAR just didn't seem like it had put in any crazy moves yet. It really just hadn't. And UDPI reflected that, you know, it's only at about zero. Still a ton of upside potential that it could potentially realize. So what I want to explore is what would have happened if one would have taken their profits out of Luna at this point. So imagine you just got a 10x profit coming out of the summer, you know, and taking those profits, move those into an asset like HBAR that was at lower risk. How would one have done at that point? So here, what I'm doing is I'm showing you actually that exact kind of point in time, that exact day um, that I was just showing you there on the other graphs around August 28th, um, 21. And so with Luna, you know, if, if you had a Luna position back here that you'd built and then ridden that 10x move, seeing that the UDPI is at about four, maybe thinking, should I take profits, maybe move them to a lower risk asset? Here's where HBAR was sitting at that exact time. You know, it had risen coming out of the summer, but it was at about 26 cents, nothing too crazy. You know, it had put in around about a, maybe a 2x move coming out of here, but nothing too crazy yet, just kind of a slow appreciation. And what we can see is that if one had taken those 10x profits of, of Luna at this point, put them into an asset like HBAR that was still sitting at a low risk zone, you know, at about, um, about zero, so a lot lower risk than four at that time. Look what HBAR did after that. If one would have entered HBAR at this point, it exploded. It went up over 2x from there. It went from 26 cents to almost 60 cents from there. One would have been able to compound their profits. You know, one would have been able to take this around about a 10x move and then multiply that by a two little over 2x move there. You're talking about a 20x overall profit. You know, take that 10x, turn it into a, a 20x profit overall. And that's really the power we think here at Upside Down, uh, Upside Down Data of having multiple risk indicators like this, where once an asset, especially an early mover like um, like Luna was during this uh, coming out of the summer, once that's kind of tapped out, hit those high risk zones, in this case a four, moving into this this asset, HBAR, that was at about a zero, could then ride that for over a 2x move and then duplicate your profits, basically, if not, if not a little bit more. And so that's really how you can make some crazy gains potentially in the crypto markets is not just riding one asset to huge gains, which of course are outstripping anything you'd get in the stock market or anywhere else, but then you can take those profits, move them to a lower risk asset that hasn't moved yet, ride those profits, take the profits out of there, and you can even make even more multiples. And that's how you can really turn even just small amounts of money into large amounts of money in not too long of a time. You know, this whole strategy would have played out over the period of just a couple months. You know, you could have turned a thousand dollars here into twenty thousand dollars in just the space of one or two months. That's pretty nuts if you think about it. That's pretty extreme profits. So again, none of this is financial advice. You should form your own strategies and your own own opinions. But this is just one thing that we look at with the UDPIs, and one of the things that we think is offers a lot of utility from have, having multiple risk indicators like this, where you can pay attention to if one is moved first sooner than another one. If there's a high risk asset that you have a position in, maybe you want to move that into a lower risk asset, and then maybe ride moves that it's going to put in later. So that's just one thing that we like to think about here about the use of having these multiple indicators. So to talk a little bit more about where we are right now, Luna sits at um, 0.68. So it's a roughly equal risk to reward. So a little bit more downside potential than upside potential the model thinks right now, but nothing crazy. You know, we're not at these historically high risk zones where you have to really maybe be careful. We're also not in these historically low risk zones either where uh, it's been historically a fantastic buying opportunity. We're kind of sitting in the middle right now. So not a terrible risk reward proposition right now, but not spectacular and not horrible. So again, not financial advice, form your own opinions, but that's what the model thinks about Luna right now. And just to go back to what I was mentioning a little bit earlier, so here at Upside Down Data, we currently have 16 risk indicators that we're monitoring and we're adding, excuse me, we're adding more every single week. So if you want to keep apprised with those as they come out, follow the channel. We'll be putting out more videos about new indicators in the coming weeks um, and days. And really what we think is useful is, is, again, you can look across the crypto space and see which assets seem to be a little bit overheated and which ones seem to be maybe in the kind of more favorable risk to reward ratio. Things like currently Algo, um, ADA, uh, XRP kind of sitting in these negative zones where the downside potential is actually lower than the upside potential. Upside potential is outweighing the downside potential. And one can think that if one has uh, a position in a high risk asset currently, one could think that maybe it's time to start moving those profits into one of the lower risk assets to ride those up. So again, not financial advice, form your own opinions and strategies. But that's just one of the things that we think about when we look at these indicators and why we think it's so useful to have all these different indicators across the crypto space that we can really compare the risk reward ratios for different assets and then think if, if our money would be put to better use in a different asset if we've already ridden profits to a high level 
on some different asset. So again, not financial advice, but just some things that we what we think about here at this channel. So if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on Twitter. And remember, with the UDPI, we're all going to make it.